Welcome back to the Sports News Analysis YouTube channel, where I'm always breaking down the hot sports topics of the day. My name is Mike. The NFL offseason is ramping up here with the scouting combine starting a couple days from now, and then of course the free agency period, and uh, the NFL draft looming as well. So you've seen, I've seen a lot of teams sort of posture themselves by cutting players in order to have some cal salary cap flexibility for later in the offseason. Uh, the Jets were a team that made uh, headlines on two fronts today, one regarding players that they cut, and two regarding the Darrell Revis contract situations, which continues to be a long, drawn-out drama and looks like it's going to lag uh, into the preseason and into the regular season as we, um, you know, as we go through uh, the NFL calendar here. But first of the players that the Jets cut. The Jets cut linebackers Calvin Pace and Bart Scott, who were two big money uh, linebackers that had seen better days. Bart Scott joining the Jets in 2009, Calvin Pace joining the Jets in 2008. So I, I'm on board with them cutting those two players. Uh, they need to get younger at the linebacker position. They need to cover in space better. And I think those two guys were older guys making a lot of money who I don't think were the long-term or even the short-term solution to linebacker if you've watched the Jets play the last couple of years. So I have no problem with those two cuts. Uh, Eric Smith was also cut the backup safety. No big loss there. Jason Smith, who they acquired in a trade uh, for Wayne Hunter this past preseason. Look, I, I like Jason Smith only because he got Wayne Hunter out of New York. So, But Jason Smith is nothing special either, so no big surprise in the cut there. And they also cut uh, Josh Baker back up tight end as well. So, you know, the big names are Calvin Pace and Bart Scott. By cutting all five of these guys, the Jets actually shed $35 million off their cap number. So the Jets were um, over $20 million over the cap before today. Now they get themselves under the cap, give themselves some flexibility to maybe re-sign a Leron Landry or um, you know, uh, extend some guys they want to extend, go out there and get a tight end to replace Dustin Keller if they don't decide to re-sign him. So it gives them some flexibility on many fronts, again, heading into the draft and also into the free agency period. The other issue that came up with the Jets today, as I mentioned before, was some more comments Darrell Revis made on the NFL Network uh, regarding the fact that uh, you know it was news to him that uh, the Jets uh, were looking to trade him. You know the same old story. We heard this about a month ago from Revis, right before Idzik was hired as GM, that he was surprised that the Jets were looking to trade him. It caught him off guard, sort of playing the victim. Which from Revis, look, Revis is a guy that held out before his first training camp had a public holdout two years ago. Uh, to me, if you're going to be a guy who, who holds out for the last dime every time you can, uh, don't play the victim card. Uh, this is a team that paid you $32 million on a guaranteed contract. Okay, I think you're gonna get, he's going to get paid $45 million throughout the life of the contract. He's upset because he's getting paid $6 million this year, and he thinks he's worth more. Well, you know, he probably is worth more if he was healthy coming off of last year. This is a guy who ended the season with an ACL injury. I think this whole contract situation is putting neither team, neither side really has leverage, whether it's Revis or the Jets. You know, from Revis' standpoint, you know, he no, teams are probably not going to be willing to trade for him or give the Jets what they need to get in return for him because he's coming off of an ACL injury. Also, on the flip side, they probably wouldn't be willing to give Revis the long-term extension he wants as well because he's coming off an injury. So Revis is at a disadvantage in that respect. As far as the Jets go, even if they want to trade Revis, I think they'll be they don't want to give him away, but the only way something's going to someone's going to give them what they want for Revis is if they watch Revis play. And the only way that's going to happen is if they start the season and there's a trade mid-season for, you know, a guy like Revis, which is very rare for an NFL for NFL teams uh, to trade in the middle of the season before the trade deadline. It's not impossible, it's not unheard of, but it's just not something that is common practice in the NFL, especially for a player of Darrell Revis's magnitude. I mean, you look, um, if Revis is at full strength, he's the best cornerback in the league. He might be the best defensive player in the league. He's at least going to warrant a number one pick from someone. So you're going to have to, if he's at full strength, give up a number one pick and then re-sign him to this big money deal uh, he wants and deal with all the headaches that are going to come from signing him in the future. So, you know, there's risk uh, on the team that would potentially trade for Revis, there's risk on the Jets side not getting enough for Revis, and there's obviously Revis not getting the money he wants because teams are not going to be sure about his health. 
So this is just a mess of a situation that's going to linger, um, I'm sure, into the offseason workouts, into the preseason. And I don't know when we're going to come up with a solution to this because of what I just laid out. Um, I think Idzik has to be firm. You know, Revis has come out and said that, you know, he lays this all on the owner. He doesn't think the owner likes him. Well, you know what, Darrell? I mean, if you held, if I owned a, if you owned a business and your most important employee held out for more money every single time he could, uh, complained about you in the press, you know, how would you feel about that employee? I mean, that's the situation Woody Johnson is in. And I'm not taking Woody Johnson's side because I'm not a huge Woody Johnson fan. But I sort of understand where everyone is coming from in this situation. I think in a perfect world, the Jets would have liked Revis to be healthy heading into the offseason. They would have liked to trade him and fill some of the noticeable gaps that they have on their team. I think they need to use Revis as a chip to get better. And they're not going to trade him unless they think they're getting the value that they think is warranted. So... Again, the situation is just a strange situation. Uh, you know, I don't see it ending anytime soon. I'm sure it'll be in the news a lot more from now until then. And uh, the New York tabloids will, have, tabloids will have a field day with this. But the good news for the Jets today, coming out of today, is they do get under that salary cap number by cutting Scott Pace, the two Smiths, and Josh Baker. And they sort of move forward from here with some flexibility. Uh, we'll see how this Revis situation unfolds. You know, what do you guys think of the Revis situation? Uh I personally think the Jets should not trade him until they can get some kind of value for him. And if that doesn't happen, then I don't I don't see just trading him for any offer just to get something back for him. I think they should either re-sign him or trade him at the top of his peak trade value um, whenever that happens to be, even if it is in the middle of the season. Let me know what you guys think. Uh, hit me up in the YouTube comments. Hit me up on Twitter, at S News Analysis. And guys, I uh, post daily sports talk videos two, three, four, five times a day, as you'll see from my feed here. So if you subscribe, you'll get all these videos uploaded directly to your feed for free. Thanks a lot for listening, guys, and have a great day.